Hello everybody, welcome to tomorrow. The Transporter 14 mission launched successfully with multiple payloads on board, but the main one that I'm most interested in is the one from the Exploration Company, their Mission Possible test capsule, their kind of mid-size teenager capsule, the second capsule that they've tested that's a subscale demonstrator, preparing the way for their eventual cargo capsule and maybe someday crew capsule. Things went well with the launch, and this time they were able to successfully separate their capsule from the rocket the first time they did that with their uh, bikini mission is what they called it for their teeny teeny tiny little subscale demonstrator that flew on the first Arion 6 mission and did not deploy from the upper stage of the Arion 6 rocket. This time, the Mission Possible capsule successfully separated from the upper stage of the Falcon 9 seemingly did a couple of maneuvers and prepared for re-entry. Re-entry may have been successful. It looks like they either didn't have their parachute deploy or they may have lost signal at some point during re-entry and lost the mission. The way that they're framing it is as a partial success. So I did want to read real quickly this statement that they put out. This is a statement that the company put out on LinkedIn. They said that their mission possible was a partial success and a partial failure. The capsule was launched successfully, powered the payloads nominally into orbit, stabilized itself after separation with the launcher, re-entered, and re-established communication after blackout. But it encountered an issue afterwards based on our current best knowledge, and we lost communication communication a few minutes before splashdown. We're still investigating the root causes and we'll share more information soon. We apologize to all of our clients who entrusted us with their payloads. We thank our teams for their hard work and their dedication to success. We have been pushing boundaries in record time and cost. This partial success reflects both ambition and the inherent risks of innovation, leveraging the technical milestones achieved yesterday and the lessons we will extract from our ongoing investigation. We will then prepare to refly as soon as possible. So one of the interesting things to me about this is apparently this entire thing cost about $30 million, $20 million to develop and build the spacecraft itself, and then $10 million to get it hosted on the Transporter 14 mission for launch. So they should be able to do it again if they have that kind of uh, funds available. It took them about two years to build this capsule, and... They have more employees now, so maybe there's a chance it might take them less time to build a replacement capsule to do these tests. However, their founder and CEO, Helene Hubie, uh, she said some really interesting things the day before launch that told us a little bit more about their development process for this. Hello, my name is Helene Hubie. I am the co-founder and CEO of the Expression Company. Regarding space capsules, we have flown last year our baby capsule and just in a few hours we're going to fly our teenage capsule mission possible 2.5 meter diameter 1.6 ton and then in august 28 this is the day that we are having right now in the planning we're going to fly nix our adult capsule this is going to fly to the ass to come back and then to be reused Nix is going to serve the commercial LEO destination, so this private space station which are being developed in the United States and across the world. And hopefully Nix is also going to serve the Indian space station. And regarding space exploration vehicles, we're going to partner with the UAE to develop first a very small lunar lander demonstrator that's going to uh, be tested on the ground in the desert in 27. And then, then I hope that we will be able to bring together to the lunar surface, the UAE and Europe. What is success? What is failure? Well, success is very simple. We are flying with 26 payload clients and success or duty vis-a-vis -vis these clients is that we bring back these payloads to their client. And this will be mission success. Failure is also very simple. <laughs> if we are not being injected in the right re-entry trajectory, or if we fail after the separation with the rocket stabilizing the capsule, then we will not survive and this will be mission failure. And then in the between, we have partial success. Something great about this mission is that we're going to have NASA. I think we are the only 
European Space Company having a direct Space Act agreement with NASA. NASA is going to take off with its plane from Hawaii almost at the same time when SpaceX is going to take off from Vandenberg. And then NASA is going to track our re-entry. That's going to be great because we're going to have data and then we're going to be able to improve. And in case we fail, then we're going to better understand what went wrong. You know, when we developed the capsule, we took some risks because we wanted to be fast, because we wanted to save costs. And by the way, we've been breaking records. We've developed this control re-entry capsule in the fastest manner and in the lowest cost manner in Europe. But, you know, going very fast means also we had to take risk. We had to make decisions in our design and also in the development logic to ensure this speed and to ensure this affordability. For example, we have only one parachute. For example, we have only one onboard computer. For example, we've not built a propulsion qualification model to de-risk every detail of our propulsion system. For example, we've not done a drop test with the parachute. So these are decisions that have ensured speed, that have ensured affordability, but there are also some inher inherent risk in our capsule because of, that deci of these decisions. You know, it's hard to say how to feel about this because on the one hand, it's great that they're doing stuff like that and taking risks and trying to push forward as fast as they can. And on the other hand, there obviously was a couple more tests that they needed to do in order to ensure that this didn't happen. However, it is strange to me that they had a communication blackout shortly before splashdown and that everything else was fine up until that point you know, as far as we know, fine. I do really admire this company, though. It's made up of the core group of people from the European Space Agency who developed and flew the ATV cargo transfer vehicle. So they do have quite a bit of spacecraft experience and flying spacecraft to the International Space Station. They just don't have a whole lot of re-entry experience yet. I'm really hoping, though, that things succeed for them and that the International Space Station doesn't get deorbited before their planned test flight of their big Nix capsule in 2028. Yes, that's about three years away, but they might be able to pull it off. And even so, they have contracts with both Axiom Space and VAST to deliver cargo to their private space stations whenever those get flying. Aside from delivering cargo, the company has their own ambitions of someday flying crew into space, and they even have a couple of interesting renders of lunar landers, both delivering cargo and potentially crew. So if things can succeed for them and they can continue to get the private investments that they've been getting and continue to receive contracts and customers, then they might be able to pull off a lot of their goals. Better to aim high and still achieve something than to achieve nothing at all, right? In any case, as far as the Transporter 14 mission goes, a lot of the other payloads on board were successfully deployed. What their status is right now is a little bit unknown, but interestingly, there was another re-entry capsule on board from Varda Space. This is their fourth capsule of their Winnebago system, making pharmaceutical drugs in space. There's definitely a joke there about uh, making drugs in a Winnebago, but in space. All of Varda's previous missions have been successful so far, so there's a good chance that it's going to do its thing and re-enter and be recovered over Australia like their previous missions. In the meantime, we've gotten one more update for the Axiom mission, which should be launching tomorrow, Wednesday, June 25th. If everything goes well, we'll have a successful crew flight to be talking about very soon. If you'd like to learn more about the exploration company, I'll put a link in the description to their website as well as their LinkedIn where they post the majority of their updates and all sorts of cool little snippets here and there. So definitely check that out if you'd like to learn more about them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so that you're notified anytime we upload new videos. And also consider becoming a member so that you can get access to exclusive content and help us to make more videos like this. So thank you to everyone who has been supporting us already. Until the next time I see you guys, keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody. And don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.